We meteorologists disagree about forecasts all the time, but occasionally we even disagree about how to describe the current weather situation. That happened last week with the storm that affected the East Coast Wednesday and Thursday and then dumped plenty of rain in eastern and central Pennsylvania Friday through Sunday. Let's go back to last Tuesday. Here's a satellite view. An old front had stalled off the East Coast. And now let me overlay a pressure analysis on top of this. High pressure was in charge across New England. Somewhat diffuse lower pressure was farther south off the southeast coast. And in between where these isobars, these green lines, are close together, some strong easterly winds were blowing. Now let's look at the situation 24 hours later. High pressure was still in control to the north. This is on Wednesday. And now we saw a low develop along that old front a couple hundred miles off the Carolina coast. The large pressure difference between the high and that developing low produced a wide swath of strong east winds. And here I've shaded where they were 40 miles per hour or higher, already reaching the coast from Norfolk, Virginia to Charleston, South Carolina. Now by Thursday, that low took on a decidedly tropical look on satellite imagery. The isobars between the low and the high to the north were even closer together, meaning stronger winds, but the distribution of those winds changed. One zone shifted north, where, while a couple other pockets of faster winds were concentrated around the center of that storm. And this was an indication that the storm was acquiring at least some tropical characteristics. Now this analysis doesn't have enough resolution to capture the actual lowest pressure of the storm, so let's close in with the visible satellite imagery. A Hurricane Hunter plane at this time reported a central pressure of 991 millibars, 29.25 inches of mercury. That's plenty low enough to qualify as a tropical storm. And the Hurricane Hunters also made some interesting temperature observations. Up around 5,000 feet, they measured 53 degrees just outside the center, but 66 in the center itself, so that the storm had developed a warm core, at least down low, another characteristic of tropical systems. And the radar image at this time also had a tropical look, with bands of showers spiraling around a rain-free center. And here's the radar image the next day when the storm was inland. I can tell you that non-tropical low-pressure systems don't look like this after forming over warm water and moving inland. So why didn't this storm get a name? Well, for one, it didn't have that warm center at higher levels of the atmosphere. But there were probably non-meteorological reasons as well, including that most of its impacts along the coast occurred before it took on tropical characteristics. So naming it late in the game might have sent a confusing message to the public. That's actually what happened with the so-called perfect storm back in October of 1991. Paul Knight's here with the extended forecast next.